Hey everybody, this is Mark from Northwest Bourbon. When I came home from work yesterday, I had a box in my porch. I said, what's in the box? You want to find out? I'm going to share it with you. Get ready. All right, hey everybody, this is Mark from Northwest Bourbon. Like I said, when I came home from work yesterday, I saw the box on my porch. I said, what's in the box? Like Brad Pitt from Seven. Uh, you guys know that uh, classic, old, fun-loving movie. Spoiler alert, Brad Pitt is the one that says, what's in the box like that. And uh, Seven is just a great movie about a, about a character named John who feels like us as a society have become too numb and um, accepting of everyday evil. And so he starts killing people for it. Uh, great movie. You could watch it again every day of the week. But, so, in that movie, Brad Pitt yells, what's in the box? And so, when I came home from work and saw this box, I knew it was the liquor that I'd ordered. I, I got a few bottles, so I'm going to start a short series where I go through each one of my new bottles with you guys. Sound fun? That's what I'm talking about. Alright, so let's see, the first bottle. Oh. These things don't really stand up in those things. First bottle is Bib and Tucker. Alright, so Bib and Tucker comes in a very unique looking bottle. Uh, it's got all kinds of textured lettering on the front of it. As you can see, it says right on the front, aged six years, small batch bourbon whiskey. 92 proof batch number 21 I got bottle 10485 it says during America's rough and tumble early days your finest attire was referred to as a bib and tucker bib and tucker bourbon is artfully crafted and patiently aged for six years in Tennessee so uh, try out this 92 proof bottle I got advised from uh, two of my buddies to give it a try that they both liked it so we're going to try it together. Now I had already opened it. I poured the first shot into my infinity bottle already. And I found out that this little cork is just a little cork. It doesn't have any kind of a topper. You know, to where like the topper makes it easier to grab the cork. So tonight let's pour us a mean glass of this Bib and Tucker. Let's see what we think of it. Alright, I got this glass from the Bourbon Junkies. Thank you Dan and Sean. Greatly appreciate that. It's pretty sweet. I like it. Alright, on the nose right off the bat you can you can smell vanilla and wood and like a creaminess to it. Smells really, really um, light and pleasant. Like if you take one of those wood popsicle sticks, but you've eaten all the ice cream off of it. You know the, the thin chocolate shell ice cream cones with the vanilla ice cream in the middle on the wood sticks? You know those old cheap ones that you had when you were a kid? That's, that's what this smells like. Like the chocolate's not real chocolate. And there was a uh, cheap vanilla ice cream on a wood stick. But it still smells pleasant. Let's get into it. Cheers, guys. Oh, a lot of that, a lot of that creaminess coats your mouth. And, uh, what, what came through on the nose really transfers to the palate. You taste the the vanilla, the slight hint of chocolate, the wood, um, and, and the creaminess it fills your whole mouth. It, it it almost feels in your mouth like a heavier bodied bourbon, but it drinks like a lighter bodied whiskey. You know, um, not a lot of burn going down. See how the second sip treats us. Second sip, I got a little bit more um, like cinnamon. 
and some a little bit more tangy, like a ginger, uh, on the back of the mouth. Let's try it again. Yeah, same flavors up front and in the back to where up front and in the middle, it's creamy, fake chocolate and vanilla. Back in the mouth, it's like a ginger and cinnamon, but the cinnamon doesn't burn on the way down like uh, how Elijah Craig would or something where you can feel the cinnamon down further. It, it's more um, up in the upper throat, but it, it's good. I could see myself reaching for this if if I just wanted a, a pretty straightforward, well-balanced bourbon. Nothing too complex, nothing too crazy. Uh, there's not a whole lot of spikes or a, lot, a whole lot of complexity going on here. It's pretty simple. Um, but it, it's got a good balance to it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to drop an ice cube in it, see if that changes the flavors at all. And just pour a little more in here. So I can get something going on. All right, guys. So we dropped an ice cube in there. Well, it's not an ice cube. It's more like an ice sphere, a spherical ice block. No, not a block. I'm not a shape pathologist. It's a, it's a piece of ice. It's semi-spherical. So we're gonna swirl that around, see if it can kind of break up, uh, like separate some of the oils as water does to oil. See if we can pull some different flavors out of this bourbon. The, the the tasting notes that were on the lighter side of the spectrum, um, it really sharpened those to where a little bit more uh, fruit came out, like a, like a canned cherry. You know, not like a good, fresh, yummy, I want to eat a whole bag and regret it later. Not like a good cherry, but like a canned cherry that comes in the, uh, the can of mixed fruit to where there's like two cherries in the whole damn can. There's like a sharp tartness that came out with that, um, those lighter note spikes. Um, I don't really know how to describe. There's almost like a fig, not like a, a dried fig like you would usually see, but if you've ever eaten a fresh fig, it almost has a little bit of that as well. After the second sip, I would conclude, I would, I would definitely recommend drinking it straight. Um, adding ice to it adds an imbalance to the flavors. I, I think this was definitely made to be drank straight. Um, I, I have many bourbons on my bar that dropping an ice cube in it makes it taste way better. Uh, the, that variant that comes alive, you know, I'm not a scientist, but something that happens when you add an ice cube to it, I think a lot of my bourbons taste better when you do, but this one, not so much. I, I advise drinking it straight. Now about the $49 uh, price point, because I got it for $49, um, I, I've seen it for much more than that. If you can get it for 50 bucks or less, I would put it at a buy. Um, not a strong buy, not something that's always going to be on my bar, but definitely worth trying because I could see myself reaching for this on a regular basis when I just want a steady, strong bourbon, like something that's uh, pleasant to drink and just tastes like a good bourbon. But it doesn't have anything that really stands out that says, ooh, I feel like having some of that tonight. You know, like how some of your other favorites do. So I would put this out of buy. If you haven't tried it before, try it at 50 bucks, you know, in that general price range, but not much higher than that. But there's also a couple other offerings from Bib and Tucker aside from this small batch. So you might get something totally different with those that might be way better or not as good. Who knows? But it's it's pretty good. I like it. Don't regret it. Let's get into our uh, bad bourbon joke. All right, so I went to the doctor, and the doctor told me 
that he had heard of people going blind from drinking too much, but he thinks that I was going deaf from drinking too much bourbon. And uh, I'm telling you, that news was really hard to hear. Please like, comment, subscribe, start a conversation. Let's talk about it. Have you had Bibb and Tucker before? Do you want to see me review every single bottle that I got in this box? Let's go. Keep your drinks wet.